Yo, 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 yo. What's cracking, everybody? Outlaw here, Dads After Dark. Speaking of what's cracking, I'll tell you what's cracking. That's the top of this brute can on this second rodeo I'm enjoying right now. Second rodeo, you got that right. That's Lost 40, buddy, all day, every day. Let me tell you a little bit about that Lost 40. Tell you how you get some. You go by their tap room over there at 501 Bird Street, Little Rock, Arkansas, 72202. Walk in with a growler. Let them fill one up fresh off the taps right there at the bar. Check them out on the inner tubes, www.lost40brewing.com. Give them a call, 501-319-7275, or get on the social media. Track them down on the Instagram. Look them up on the Facebook. Whatever you do, just make sure you tell them dads after dark sent you. Get by there today. Hook yourself up with some Lost 40. Bicycle. You're live on a Monday night. It is 7.03. I'm your host, Mikey G. Thanks for tuning in. I got the outlaw, Shane Breeder. Yo, what up, outlaw? Out. Where are you pointing? He didn't answer me. You're outlaw. Oh, I am. But <laughs> <laughs> Grandpappy. Don't be clowning. Uh, Smokestack is up, not JR? with us uh, tonight. Tracy. Smokestack is out of town. Where'd he go? He was in Miami last time. Where'd he go this time? I don't know. He, is it um, in Dallas? Is, it, is that where he's at? I don't know, but that's Colorado? a great place to leave. Didn't he go to Colorado one time, too? I don't know. Can he legally do that? <laughs> it's illegal for him to travel across state lines. <laughs> <Dude, laughs> that PO's going to be pissed. <laughs> you can just ratted him out on live media. Dude, he's always traveling for work, man. I want his job. Rodney, where are you at? I don't think he actually works, man. Howard Holmes. No, he does. He comes in my work every once in a while. Oh, does he? Mm-hmm. He drives. <laughs> it's on the clock. He drives into your work? He drives to my work. Not through your work? No, that would suck. I was going to say, where you work, Sonic or something? <clears throat> no, it's <was> Tornado Alley. <laughs> Tornado Alley. Well, you know, you know, you say that, man, and uh, I got to say a big, I got to big, say a big old thank you to the man upstairs, man. We, we, uh, our area over here got hit pretty hard Friday night with some tornadoes and some wind and damage and everything else, and I think pretty much everybody came out of came out of it unscathed. Some there property were, damage. There were minor injuries, mm-hmm. scratches, bruises, some cuts. Um, we're not talking about your marriage. There was a lady and her son in a car driving down. So Pruitt over here in our area was the hardest hit out of the whole situation. It came on record as an EF two tornado. Uh, it was on the ground for I believe a mile and a half or so. But I think it started right here. Um, it went East Fairview. It crossed over East Fairview and cut a path. It took out sections of Pruitt. Uh, Alvy had good coverage. Yeah, Tracy, I was actually out there in the middle of it with a chainsaw trying to get people out from underneath trees and and uh, before it came, though, you were looking for them tigers, though, weren't you? Oh, one hundred percent. I was one hundred percent in the front yard. <laughs> I had, and this, here's what I told somebody. They said, "What was you doing?" I said, "I was in the front yard with a twisted T." Yep. They said, "What was you doing?" I said, "I was about to f- around and find out." <laughs> 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 That's exactly what I was doing. But no, I stand out there, and it's and it's weird. Is I've been in this, I've been in this situation at least four times. And what prison? Yeah. Um, my butt still hurts. Um, the, every time it's the same, but it's like, it's the first time all over again. Yeah. Um, I'm sitting out there. I, in the background, I hear this. Well, so public service announcement, everybody go download the 
Red Cross Tornado app. They should have it for both iPhone and Android. Um, I will tell you that sitting on my front porch, so the Red Cross Tornado app will, what's up, Lisa? It will alert you just like the tornado sirens alert you. That is the sound that it makes. It, you, it makes the tornado siren sound on your phone. I'm sitting on my porch. I'm not watching anything because my phone's about to die, and I didn't, just in case we lost power. Yeah. Um, not looking on social media, not doing anything. And my phone goes off and starts making the tornado sign sound. And I was like, oh, crap. That doesn't mean there's one on top of me. That just means there's one in the monitored area that I have set. So on my phone, on the app, I have Benton, Bryant, Saline County, and wherever my phone is to be monitored. So one of the above places, there was a sighting, I guess. So my phone starts going off, and I was like, hey, this is crazy. What up, Billy Blasting Game? So the sound goes off on my phone. I look up at my phone to see what it says. And about 15 to 20 seconds later, I hear the actual tornado sirens going off. So I received an alert before, before the, sirens. the sirens went off. So it's spot uh, on. I like the way you say sirens. 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 Um, there's like a S-Y-R. There's a Z in there. Sirens. Sirens. Um, so I got it pretty quick. Um, and I'm sitting there, so I'm listening. I'm trying to hear what's going on outside. And then I hear way off in the distance, I hear this. Poof. And I was like, what was that? So I really wasn't sure. And then I hear it again. And then a few seconds later, it was really close, and it was a boom. Oh, well, when I hear boom, my lights flickered. Uh-oh. And I immediately knew something was not right. So I open the door, and I look inside. Mary and Chase are laying on there on the couch. Chase is asleep. And I look inside, and I'm looking at Mary, and I'm looking back outside. So I got one foot in and one foot out. And I'm looking at her, and I'm looking back outside. And she was like, what? And I was like, I'm trying to figure out which way to run. <laughs> like, <laughs> I don't know if I want to run out in the yard. Do I run to you right. or away from you? And then I was like, I, I, I think it's here. But like, I'm, I'm waiting on actually things to start going sideways. Yeah. And then that tells me it's time to get the hell in the shelter. Well, and that's the thing <clears> is you never, you, you never, they never hit in the daylight. They always hit at nighttime, and you can't see them. We didn't get a warning. The, they were arguing on the cha- on the news channel, apparently, about yes and no, and maybe, and it should be, but it couldn't be, but I don't think it is, but they're all clear, and yeah. then it happened. That's what somebody was uh, posted on Facebook. They, 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 were, they, uh, they took off to the neighbor's house, then they left, and then they came running, running yeah. back to the neighbor's I house. I think Mary actually heard the argument between the news anchors on the dadgum Facebook, but so I'm standing out there and was it Todd Yukobian? I think it was. I like Todd. He's a good. Dude. Um, you hear this just super high pitch, just <laughs> and and the tree in my front yard pointed to the tornado, and I'm not kidding. It <laughs> leaned over and said, "It's over. It's there. over there, dumbass." And I could see the cloud. I could not see the tornado, and I could hear it, and I could follow it. As it was going, and the pressure changed, like everything outside was mm. different. And I immediately called my brother because he was on duty, and I was like, "Hey, Baconator, um, why is he always on duty when stuff goes down?" Because that's just how we roll. <laughs> <laughs> um, I called him, and I was like, "Say, where you at?" He said, "I'm at an arch." And I said, "Okay, you might ought to come back this direction. I will put it on our dead grandmother that a tornado just went by my house." And he was like, stand by. And then you could hear radio traffic in the background, you know. And he was like, 100% confirmed. There's damage. Uh, we're getting 911 calls. People trapped um, off of Pruitt Road. And I said, bro, that's a down, quarter mile. That's, maybe. Down, that's down the street. It's right down the street. It's a quarter mile at the best. Maybe a half if I'm lucky. But it was like, holy crap. And he was like, yeah, there's damage. There's houses, blah, blah, blah. So we... uh. He was like, I need help. You can hear people saying they need help. So I got the camper attached to the truck because we were headed to the Deer Woods at 530. Yeah. And you're ready to go. Yep. Ready to go to the Deer Woods. And I decided at the last minute, I was like, I don't think it's great if we take off in a camper to the middle of the woods yep. with a tornado coming. We would have been safer, honestly, if we'd have went. But anyway, I'd hook my camper and here come police car flying by my house. And you hear the, nah, 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 nah. I was like, oh, that had to have been my brother. 
I take off down there and, and that's not even the the noise the car makes. He just makes that noise it, on his own. It was a good noise. Yeah, he was yelling out the window. He was going nah, 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 as he was driving by. <laughs> <laughs> his lights and sirens on. He was like, "Hey, brother!" <laughs> I could totally see that too. And then he played the Ghostbusters sound through his PA system. Um, but I, I t- grabbed my chainsaw, jumped in the truck, and uh, I took off down there. And it was bad. It was a hot mess. It was everything I've seen four times before. Where was it at? Down Pruitt? So I went. Pruitt goes right off of East Fairview. East Fairview. Sardis. East Fairview. Oh, East Fairview on that end of yeah. it. So, and it runs all the way to Sardis. Instead of going right, I look ahead of me further down Fairview, and I see a fire truck down there. So I'm immediately going, this is where I need to be. You're drawn to fire trucks. Exactly. So I saw the light. I went down there. Um... Rod is not here. Actually, he's sitting right here. Um, yeah, he's right there. We uh, we, did, we decided not to put him on the camera. Rod, he say hi to everybody. We get down there That's and stupid. pull the chainsaw out, and it was like, "Hey, what's up?" And I was like, "Hey, it's Preator." And he was like, "Oh, hey, what's up? Cool, you know." And <laughs> we go to cutting saw blade, or cutting, and then uh, about thirty minutes into it or so, another fire truck shows up, and they had a crew and. It was weird is because the chief of that fire truck, that fire station, I had just talked to Halloween night on the phone and hadn't talked to him in years. And I was like, hey, buddy. He was like, yeah, cool. And we chatted it up for a minute. And then he was like, man, I just talked to you on the phone, and here you are. And I was like, yeah. And now, you so get, now you can't get rid of me. Department of Emergency Management showed up, and they are like the OSHA of emergency scenes. So picture this. I'm in a bright yellow reflective hoodie with – Dicky shorts and muck boots on <laughs> and a chainsaw in my hand. And he walks up and he was like, who are you? And I was about to say, I'm the guy with the chainsaw. You want to smart off? I was about to say, Hey, I'm just here to help, you know? And, and somebody's like, Oh no, he's good. And he was like, oh, okay. And they were like, who are you? And he was like, I'm the part of emergency management. And they were like, Oh, okay. And then I went disappear because not really going to get in any trouble. But it is a unsafe and unsecure scene yeah. because there's power lines down, and you're not insured. And no, I'm not part of anything. You're not part of it. They can't than, cover. If you get injured, it's you know. Yeah, it can be a big deal. Yep. So, no, I understand it. I get it. But there was there were kiddie pools twisted up in the top of trees. Um, there is one house. That tornado wasn't kidding, was it? No, it was not kidding. Um, no, no oh, incognito. No. There was a. Uh, there's one house on Pruitt. That's missing its roof. Oh, my God. The house is intact, but the roof is gone. Um, you know when you take a big cardboard box and you break it down? Mm-hmm. There's a camper that looks like that. Oh, my God. And it's been like broken. It's just folded in. It's been broken down. So um, it was like this, and it ended up like this. Yeah, there was a lady and her son driving down Pruitt, and this is their words. She says, looks at her son, and she was like, yeah, something is not right. And all of a sudden, her car is on its driver's door spinning down the road. Oh. <laughs> Airbags deploy. You know, she's like, she had zero clue what had happened. Not a, The officer that was standing there that was talking to her, she told him. She, well, she asked him. She said, so what just happened? Like, no warning, no, no clue. She's just doo-doo-doo. And then, Bam. She had a table match in the middle of the road with a tornado, <laughs> and she didn't. She wasn't hurt. Her car was jacked up, but well, they're very lucky then. Yeah. So there was a whole lot of very lucky people. Um, apparently, it was the largest tornado produced in the state that night. Um, yeah, and there was it was all over the state. It was uh, Missouri and yep. uh, Oklahoma, and um, I think that's it, right? Yeah. It was crazy. It was. I, I, I think the only confirmed. Death that I heard of was uh, the tornado that hit in Oklahoma. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Oklahoma blows. That's why Texas sucks. Um, <laughs> but we uh we got lucky. I mean, yep. If you look at it on the map as a topical map, this whole area right here. So we are in Tornado Alley, and for some reason, it's really weird. Is the path that it started is the path that it always takes. Yep. Always. But at one brief second, it decided to make a left hand turn or. Yeah, left hand turn. So it was NASCAR. It NASCAR it. It made a little bow to the left and cut a track. And ninety percent of the damage is open land. Yeah. I mean, there were several shops that were ripped apart. There were two houses that were completely trashed. 
Um, there was a lot of damage done, but luckily that's all replaceable stuff. Yeah, and I had some friends, uh, and you know them too. We're not going to call anybody out by I name. I no friends. Yeah, you know, I know you're lying. Yeah. Anyways, uh, we had some friends that we know that um, their house got some damage, and, you know, and, and they, they, they wrote a post to the community basically saying thank you to the community because they had an outpouring of love. They've had people pretty much allowing them to stay with them. They got so, a camper. Someone loaned them a them. camper. Yes. Uh, someone, uh, you know, kept their kids for a few nights, uh, kept the dogs, and next thing it showed up to clean up debris and clean up damage. You know, dude, that's what I love about our community, man. They just, they when stuff like that happens, are you still sipping on that? Oh, yeah. <laughs> I, I took a sip and I felt it in my nose. <laughs> <laughs> but no, when stuff like that happens, man, our community comes together and that's, that. That's that's ultimately why we do what we do, man. Right. I mean, as far as all the fundraising and stuff, it's all about community, man. We take care of we take care of our community because our community takes care of us. You know, I almost thought at one minute, at one minute, you know, my brain's always like, go help, you know. And, and I you're was, gonna say your brain's always going. Well, there's that, but other things come out with it. But it was a. Uh, I was thinking, you know what? This is a, you know, an emergency situation. Maybe we should do part of our deal and help, but. Part of our fundraiser is really not going to touch what needs to be done with these people down here. But, no. Um, <clears throat> they've got insurance. I've already been able to check through people that everybody's fine. Um, they've got to start over in a sense. Uh, oh, my God. There was one house, and I'm not going to say where it was at or anything. I will just say that it there was. It was on that one street off of that other road? There was. What's up, everybody? Um, there was one house that. An emergency responder entered, and he said he froze. He immediately saw two dogs in a kennel sitting in the living room, and they were looking at him like, thank you for being here. Like, help me, please. He said the very next thing he noticed is about $30,000 worth of guitars. (gasps) Les Pauls, Gibsons, like. Don't tell Cheesy where this is at. He said it was, it was. Beautiful, but sad at the same time. But they were able to take those and put them where they belong, that where they're safe, and they will be fine, hopefully. But a lot of people don't see that. They only see the external damage. They don't see what was truly lost, you know, like sentimental things or collections or stuff like that. But I don't know. We got lucky all in all. These are all material things. We could, it could have been a hell lucky. of a lot worse. Oh, God, man. I'm telling you, like, I live in the valley of Tornado Alley. Like, Dude, that this should be a band it, name right there. Valley the of Tornado Alley. Valley of Tornado Alley. That's pretty cool right there. Uh-huh. Dad's after dark just said, what up, my dudes? What's going on here? <laughs> we're talking to ourselves. We're talking. Yeah, we're fans. My God. I, I knew I'd been having this dream where I talked to myself. But that's what's up. But that's yeah, so that's got to be Rod. What up, Rod? What up, dude? Where you at, by the way? We Smoke forgot. Stack. Where what what city are you, are you in, in right Fayetteville now? Fayetteville or something? He was you? in Fayetteville over the weekend. He's been to Dallas. He's been to Colorado. We'll call him Chuck Dovish. He went to Miami and oh, I mean, now Rodney's watching. Oh, what up, Rodney? Man, where where are you? Like I know he's out of town, but I have no idea what city he's in. I don't know, but it's uh we got lucky. Everybody got lucky. Some people got unlucky, but all in all, had an outpouring. Dude, my phone was going crazy. And it was funny as I'm sending information to other people when I got people sending me information and it was just Now the funny thing is you, you were you were getting t- Oh, okay, that I knew that. That's what I said. Anyways, you we, we were you we were getting you were getting texts in and then my wife was texting your wife and sh- your wife was texting information to the group and it was like I wasn't actually talking to you, right? But I, everything you said to Mary, total turnaround went right back to the group. Right. Well, Lisa just said, you know, if I owned all those, and then her dogs wouldn't surely be in the kennel. Well, here's the deal: they were at work. Yep. They hadn't even made it home, or they were not at home, but hadn't made it home yet. They came home to this surprise. So um maybe they had went out for dinner he's about five miles from u.s bank stadium i thought he was gonna say u.s bank i was like dude there's one of those right down the street yeah why'd you go that far just to go to a u.s bank dude Come man on. dude don't you know that they got like mobile deposits now Dang, that's stupid hey where's my car 
That's great. But yeah, the wife and I, we got away for the weekend. We uh, we waited till after state tournament last weekend, and <laughs> we went up to uh, Eureka for the weekend. Just me and her and the kids went to Jasper to see the in laws, and we got we got lucky, dude. Like uh, the majority, I think some of it hit up there earlier in the night, and uh, as we were leaving Harrison, uh, going through some little town, I don't know what it was, man. But you could just tell it; it just got hit, right? Because as we're driving through it, there wasn't a light in sight. All the street lights in the town were damaged. There were signs down. There were no lights anywhere. And as we're getting, as we're coming through the town, you could see the fire trucks and the ambulances coming through. And there were trees down in the street. And it was uh, it was interesting. It was very interesting. What are you doing? I need a paper towel for what? You need to wipe your butt. <laughs> Outlaw just pooped himself. And everything cleared out for this chili cook-off we're doing. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, we, we, we missed the majority of it. We caught a little bit of it when we got to the other side of Harrison on Friday night, but it wasn't too bad. Uh, but, like, I, I part of me, like, she got mad at me because I wanted to stop. I just wanted to check out the damage and see if anybody needed help. You just wanted to check out the damage. Pretty much. You couldn't help nobody. You I have, couldn't help. I'm like, hey, you okay? You didn't have moonshine, and you didn't have a chainsaw. I didn't have a chainsaw. That even area if, that you were in. Here's the thing. Even if I had a chainsaw, I don't know how much help I would be, because I really don't know how to use one. <laughs> I've got a little electric chainsaw. You're right. Stop <laughs> right there. You've just completely destroyed. I do not own a gas-powered chainsaw. You know, I, what you, don't, you know what else you don't own? What? A man card. That's true. <laughs> I, do, I don't own a, a gas-powered chainsaw. I do, however, own a battery, a 24-volt cobalt chainsaw and a, a handheld one, and then I have one that's on, like, the long pole saws. Right. <laughs> I don't think I'd have got a lot done with that one. Well, it was definitely destructive. Um I yes, Alvy, you're late. What up, Alvy? Um, it's about dang time. Yeah, I'm waiting like your chair is empty over We're here. We're sitting here. We, we invited you. Where are you at? We, uh, there was a lot of damage. And like I said, listening to my brother, talking to him on the phone, uh, I grabbed my chainsaw, I grabbed my goodies, and I bailed and went and cut trees and helped do some stuff. Oh, poor JG. He's like, hey, man, y'all need some help down there? And I was like, I don't know, guys. Do we need some help down here? I'm looking at these massive logs and see, so Sling County Road and Bridge is responsible for taking care of that. But I'm trying to figure out, like, where else are they or where they're needed? Where are you going to next? So the guys was like, hell yeah, man, holler at him. So I was like, come on. Well, then JG starts coming, and he's like 20 feet away, and they're like, hey, never mind. We don't need him. Road and Bridge will be here in 10 minutes. Hey, JG, I, they, they said don't worry about it. And he's like flashes his headlights. He was like, I'm here. <laughs> I was like, I'm, I'm here. I'm going to cut something now. I was like, uh, we will be doing this for at least an hour. Yeah. Um, we're probably. Uh, we talked about doing a two part tonight. We were definitely probably going to do a two part. We'll cut it off about halfway. We'll leave the video feed running. We'll stop for audio purposes and we will start because here, we'll tell you that in a minute. Actually, but, I think we're going to cut both right? and restart and because it's, it's double, reset the feed, reset the feed yeah. uh, for we're, 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 we're kind Timmy. of, we're, we're trying some new things on Facebook and we're also trying to double our YouTube content. So in the same, in the same manner, we're hot gonna, tamale sandwich. Yeah. That, and that, so, um, yeah. But, so double your pleasure, double your fun. But yeah, we got down there, we started cutting some trees, but Jason come to help and then He's got his truck and trailer with a tractor on it, and, and I pull up there and I chat with him. I bet you him. couldn't say that again five Truck times. and trailer and tractor on it. Um, <laughs> truck and trailer tractor. But he goes to turn around, and instead of physically turning around, now the intersection of East Fairview and Pruitt is very large. <laughs> it's very easy to turn around. Well, JG's like, hell, I'm just going to go down Pruitt. JG gets quarter way down Pruitt, and guess what? There's chaos down there. Uh-oh. It's completely blocked for everyone, and he is stuck like Chuck. There's nowhere for him to turn around. Especially with a trailer. So he was literally stuck there until Roden Bridge showed up and cleared a path um, so he could get out. Why didn't um, he clear a path? Because, again, we don't know about the power lines. Yeah, and- yeah, yeah, yeah. This, that, and the other. That Road always- Bridge has a crane, in a sense, attached to it. It's a logging trailer. And they just zip, boom over, grab it, pick it up, put it on a trailer or a truck, that or move always, it out of the way. That always worries the heck out of me. For for people who don't know, I mark underground power lines. That's what I do for a living. And sometimes when I'm on call out in the middle of the night, when I'm you know some some drunk idiot hits a power you know hits a power pole or something, and some of those times those lines are laying on the ground, and I don't have a clue if those are hot or not when I get there. Yeah, and 
You'll know if they're hot. No, I, I, you'll find out. I guarantee you that. But there are times that I park because I always park far away, and right. then I walk up. But at night time, you can't see. Everything. You can't see, and 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 when there's an emergency situation, you are not thinking about that. You're sorry. My compressor just kicked on. Um, Your that's, compressor? Yeah, I've got a compressor for the studio. Um, oh. I got in, but you, uh, what was I saying? Yeah, you're not always thinking about that. When oh, you yeah, roll yeah, up yeah. To a scene. But see, you know, when you've rolled up to a scene as a firefighter, it's a little different than when I, me, I'm, personally, if I'm on call out, I'll take my Well, spot. that's what I was saying. Most people are not going. I wonder if there's yeah. a gas leak or I wonder if there's, you know, power lines down. They're thinking of the end result, and that's rescuing or getting to whoever yeah. is in trouble. Um, like, as I'm down there cutting trees, a lady come up. She was like, oh, my God, I need to get through here. And I was like, ma'am, you're going to have to wait a minute because obviously you cannot get through here. No, I can walk down there. And I was like, look, ma'am, you're going to have to hold on just a second. because We don't know it's safe. We do not know that this scene is fine. I was like, there's power lines. I was like, chaos just happened. I understand that you are in you know desperation to get to your family member. I said, but as far as I know, everybody's fine. I was like, there's damage done to property, but I think everybody is fine. I was like, just hang tight just a minute. Let me get one of the firefighters over here, and we can go from there. And they ended up walking her down to where she needed to go. So um, big shout-out to, uh, you know, all the responding people, you know, Sling County, Sling County Road and Bridge, the Sling County Sheriff's Office, um, Sardis Fire Department, um, Cane Creek Fire Department, East End Fire Department, I'm sure they were busy, too. There was a lot of people um, yep. out doing what they do, and it's and not, hours and, not and, just, hours and, and hours. not just here, but all over the state. Right. And, I mean, shout out. Big shout out to, you know, all the people that, you know, sacrifice their free time to go help other people. That's, were you here that night? I'm just around the corner. Jennifer, yes, I was. So, I don't know if you know where I you, live. You, but You didn't smell him? Yeah, I live, you know, pretty dead gum close to y'all, and... Uh, I'm, I'm sorry, Jennifer. As soon as it came through, I got on the phone with my brother, who is a Slane County Sheriff's Officer, Deputy Police Man, whatever they call him today. Um, and he makes what sound again? <laughs> he, he, uh, with it, with it. <laughs> we were talking, and I was like, hey, I think a nader just came through. And he goes, hey, I think you're right. And I could hear people saying they needed help, so I went down there and – Got my chainsaw out and please do that sound again. Nah, 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 and uh, started helping. I thought someone was knocking on my door, and it was a tornado. There was definitely somebody knocking on your door. I hope um, everything turned out okay for y'all down there. I'm not sure exactly where you're at. Um, you don't have to give up your location on social media if you don't want to, but I do know that the folks on Pruitt Road, about halfway to three quarter of the ways down to Sardis, got. Their asses kicked. And it's funny how it, uh, I mean, I say funny. I don't mean funny. It's weird. Let me right. rephrase that. It's weird how it can be in an area and only affect s- so much damage in one specific place. Right. So here's something I've said before. So I've seen aerial shots of tornadoes and the damage. Um, just like right down here. There's a gentleman that lives down the road who had a pretty nice shop, probably about the size of uh, my shop. Um, and In the undisclosed location. Yeah, he uh, had a little lean-to built on. I think his camper was parked underneath it and all that, but it might have been a year old. I think it's roughly, it might be two years old. I'm not really not good with time like that, but it was pretty damn new. Um, gone. Gone. His house is probably 40 yards away from the shop. Yep. And from what I could tell at that very moment in time, nothing. His house was fine. <laughs> I mean, there his may lean, have his been. His lean to is now leaned on his house. Uh, Alvy, we'll jump back on this conversation as soon as you get here, my friend, because yeah, we everybody continue. knows uh, Alvy was able to get out there and, 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 Forgive of course, me. Of course, Alvy was out. Forgive me. I don't know when he was there. I honestly hadn't even watched his live from that day. Mary watched it, but I went. I was focused on helping. Um, we went out there and helped for a little while, and then I came home and let my adrenaline die down and then went to bed because this was also opening weekend of youth deer season. Yep. That's just what we do in my family. And typically – 
so around five o'clock, we were supposed to be leaving to go to deer camp. Um, obviously, the storms changed my mind and decided that we should stay home and not go to the middle of the forest with a tornado coming with a, or the possibilities to of. To stay in a structure that's on wheels. Right. So we, uh, we chose not to go. In return, we got to hang out with a tornado for a brief moment and go pick up the trash it left behind. What time did you get home? I don't know. It was probably 1 o'clock in the morning. That's, way past, that's way past your bedtime. Um, yeah. We uh, got back home, chilled out. And, if I'd have uh, known that, I'd have started texting you like 8 o'clock Saturday morning. It, I think the house, I think it did jump from house to house. It's pretty sketchy if you go look at the damage that was done. But uh, So I came home. I chilled out. Uh, we had no power. We didn't have power throughout the night. Uh, got up the next morning somewhere around 10 o'clock in the morning. And we should have been leaving the deer stand to go back to camp at 10 o'clock in the morning, yeah. roughly. So it's kind of garbage because I checked my game camera. If it saw something. I had a nice little seven point buck sitting there. Of course you did. At seven. I thought you were gonna say it was a nineteen point buck. No old thirty point buck. <laughs> <laughs> Quick, had, it's always there when you're not there. Had a little seven point and that'd have been beautiful for Chase. Yeah. Um He got him one, didn't he? He did get him a little a little buck. Um I like dude, I'm not a hunter. Uh, but I love seeing all the videos from you or seeing the, the 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 pictures on Facebook from from the youth hunts. All right, and all the kids that get their get their first deer, and it, it's awesome. So y'all get your visual glasses on for a minute, and I'm gonna Is, take y'all on a ride. What other glasses are there? There's all kinds of glasses. There's uh, tea glasses. <laughs> There's tea. moonshine glasses. <laughs> There's beer glasses. Y'all get your audio glasses on. Get your visual glasses on, and I'm going to take you for a ride. Those of you who have ever been hunting has more than likely seen a box stand. Um, that is what we hunt out of. It's a four foot deep by six looks feet like a, long. It looks like a box. It's a rectangle, actually, but <laughs> it's a box. <laughs> I mean, you can have boxes that are rectangles. It's a rectangular box. I didn't box. say it was a square. Um, it is a four by six foot box, roughly 12 feet off the ground, somewhere around there. Um, I have a bench seat out of a church van. You watch your mouth in there, so we can all three chill at the same out time. Of a, out of a church van. Out of a church van seat. Um, so it was just me and Chase. This is not like a church pew up in there, right? Pew, that would be pew, pretty. <laughs> that would be pretty cool, though. And whiskey glasses. There are whiskey glasses. That is true. We uh, so me and Chase are sitting there. Mary hunted with us. Friday, excuse me, Saturday evening, um, but she went home Sunday morning because she had a date with her mother yep. at uh, Murray's. Murray's Dinner Playhouse. Oh, Murray's. So, me and Chase sitting in deer stand. So y'all took two vehicles down there? Yeah. It's a 45-minute ride. It ain't too bad. Oh, uh, okay. Um, we get down there. We're, uh, I've noticed in that deer she stand. likes to travel by herself without She does you. not like me at all. No, she does um, not. We get to the deer stand. Uh, just shortly after daylight, we had little bitty doe that just walked up to my left-hand side. I've got three lanes, one on my left, one on my right, one to the middle. 90% of all of our deer come to the middle. Um, very, very rare do we have one to the left, and occasionally we get one to the right. So little old doe comes up on the left-hand side, and Chase is like, Daddy, Daddy, Daddy. And I'm like, no, sir, we're not, we're not doing that. And, and I'm going to choose my words wisely only because Facebook will – there's a first. Get in tr- we'll get in trouble for saying certain words that have to do with weapons. You'll get bananaed. Yes. So Don't want to get bananaed. Um, Chase is like, Daddy, 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 let me, let me, let me. And I was like, no, buddy, we're not going to do that. And he was like, why? And I was like, I think that thing sneezed its spots off of its body right before it came up our lane right here. <laughs> like, I could, you know how you can grab a dog by the back of its neck, like the its loose skin and just kind of pick it up i could have done that with this deer that's how small it was oh man so and he was like dad not worth it not happening so trying to teach a little responsibility at the same time so she walks off a little patience too a little bit later another one comes in comes in from the front gets up pretty close to us and he's like dad 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 i was like nope what do you mean no dad it's youth hunt i can do whatever i want there's no rules i said you're right because typically there's a three-point rule. It's got to have at least three on one side for you to harvest it. Yeah. Um, youth hunt, they can take whatever they want. There is no rules, no exceptions, no nothing. So we're not doing that. Why? Because we don't need to do this. 
we have food at home. You know, yep. we don't have to do this, so we're going to do this wisely. Um, <coughs> that one comes up. He gets he's mad this time, like seriously mad. So he takes a nap. <laughs> um, yeah, they are very good and tender, Mister Bill. I wish that worked um, with my kids. I'd, I'd piss them off all the time if they just yeah. take a nap. And he took a nap, and then I had another one come up to the right hand side again. It wasn't nothing that we could take, so. Let it go, and then we're pushing 10 o'clock in the morning, and I see one poke its head out to the right-hand lane. Now, my right-hand lane is the worst possible scenario we could have, especially if Chase is going to be the one to take it because I'm in between him and the window, and we're we're using a thirty thirty, which is a shorter yeah. um, hunting rifle. So... As soon as I saw the face of this deer come out, I had no clue what it was. But we done let four walk. It was like, all right, the rules are out the windows. We have been extremely patient. We're taking the next one. I do not care. Because once you get the one, you're done for the weekend, right? No, you can go again. Okay. But it, you're kind of done, especially on Sunday. Yeah. You know, so I see it. Chase. Get it. Chase. I look over. This dude is out cold. So I elbow him a couple of times. I'm like, bro, get up. He wakes up. He's like, what? I was like, dear, dear, dear. He immediately starts shaking like a switch click. And he was like, where, where, where? And I was like, over here. So he's like, you know, we got to be careful. He's looking. And I was like, all right, come on, get ready. Well, he's standing to the left of me. We've got the 3030 out the window. It's right in my face. Like everything about this is wrong. He is not even holding it correctly. Everything's, like, not right, and he's shaking bad. And I was like, all right, bro, stop. Stop. This is not good. The deer's walking to us. Anybody that knows anything about deer knows that any little crick, crack, pop, tick, it's over with. So now I'm like, I need to get him on the other side of me to get set up to do this correctly. So I was like, bro, calm down, breathe, walk around me. I'm trying to get skinny. He's good, trying to get. Good luck with he, that. He's trying to get around me. He gets around me finally, but he's not all the way around me. He's hung up. I've got a little mock table that's about halfway up. You just know at some point yeah. you're going to make a noise and that dude's yeah. going to go. He is hung up, and then he moves, and it's like, Poof. and I was like, oh my god, dude, be still, don't move. Deer doesn't even look at us. So I was like, you know what? Screw this. He climbs up over the top of me, gets down on the other side. He's looking down at the deer. The deer's looking up here at us. He sticks the 3030 out the window and sits on my knee. And I was like, well, here we go. Well, then there's such thing as the as a perfect shot. I'll just say it. There's a perfect shot, which is broadside, just at the front uh-huh. shoulder. Um. Deer's got his butt to us. He's like, Dad. And I was like, wait, just wait. Then the deer is facing us. Dad, I'm going to put it right in the sh- right between it, right in his chest. And I was like, no, you're not. Dad, Chase, stop. Then it turns perfect. Get him. Get him. Takes a finger off or puts a finger on safety. Gets a finger on the pew-pew stick. On no booger hook. That's what I call booger it. Booger hook. He gets his finger on the booger hook. Man name called it. And I said, get it. Just as soon as he starts squeezing, the deer steps into the woods. And I was like, no, no, no. Oh, my God. He shot. And I was like, okay. He starts crying immediately. And I was like, buddy, why are you crying? There was just so much going on, Dad. I just woke up. (laughs) He was like, I had to climb over you, and it wasn't right. And it was like, and you're trying to get skinny. And I was like, the deer was doing the hokey pokey. He kept turning himself around. Like, everything was wrong. We get down. We know there's no sign. There's no nothing. Finally, it was like, he goes, it was his idea. I done given up. Everything in my mind says he did not hit this. He even said, Daddy, I don't think I hit it. He says, Dad, let's go look in the woods. And I was like, bro. Look at the woods in front of us. Like, what are we going to look for? So we back and forth, and how finally was like, you know what? I'm I'm going to give him this. You know, let's just go. Well, when you're tracking or searching for signs of a wounded animal, it's just like investigating a crime scene, right? Yep. 
I will scan. I will walk 50 yards left to right, and then I will go 10 steps forward. And then I will move 50 yards to my left and then 10 steps forward. So basically I'm snaking through the woods looking at every little You're looking for broken thing, limbs, everything. some leaves that are scattered. We're 50 yards in. Nothing. And I'm like, sorry, buddy. And he was like, Dad, I knew I missed it. And I was like, it's all right, bro. I was like, we all miss. I was like, not a big deal. I was like, but we know what happened, right? And he was like, 100%. He was like, it's cool. And I was like, cool. It's a learning moment. Like, we, yeah. we're, we're good here. And then as I'm turning around to leave, I see about a softball-sized puddle on the ground. And I was like, I'll tell you what, dude. Let's just look a little bit more. And he was like, but that, just, let's not give up. I'd already given up. And he found it. And he was like, oh, well, then we didn't find any more. So now I walk 10 steps and I do a half a circle. And then I go 10 more steps. Well, 50 more yards later, I find a, when I tell you, think of how big around a straw is. That's the dot I found on a flat piece of grass laying on the ground. And I was like, okay. And then I find a little bit and a little bit. And I was like, Chase, come here. He's way back there. He don't even know where I'm at. He can't even see me. It seems like way too much work. It was amazing, dude. It is so much fun. But anyway, we find him. He's over there laid up. Chase was like ecstatic. We got a picture or two. And then Chase was like, Daddy, you going to put blood on my face? Yes, sir. So <laughs> you know how the athletes, you know, they put the black underneath uh-huh. their eyes. Yeah, I got a little blood off the deer and get him a little war paint because that's an Indian thing, you know. So get him a little war paint. And, boy, he, he was cheered up. And he was like, now what? I said, get that dude and get him out of here. He's like, Okay. <laughs> He didn't move that deer an inch. So guess who had to drag this big old fat deer all the way through the woods back out to where our stand was? Yeah. It wasn't him. But great time. We got him out, got him done. It was a, uh, I called him a micro four point. He's about a two year old deer per uh, my brother. But we've got his, uh, he's getting a year old mount done on it. It's his first ever buck. So. We got to give him a round of applause for harvesting his first buck and doing doing his job. You know, he got it done. So, well, kudos. You know, like I said, I enjoy seeing all that. I'm I'm not a hunter. I haven't raised my kids to be, and whatever. I I don't care. But I, I like seeing all the pictures, man. And I know the kids enjoy it. I that that's got to be a lot of fun for them, man. Some of my best memories of my life are being in the woods with my grandfather hunting. Yep, like. <clears throat> deer hunting, rabbit hunting, squirrel hunting, all the above. It was, it's great. Um, we're gonna have to uh, move that back, probably. Yeah, hold on a second here, Alvy. We're gonna we're gonna end you this can, live session and then we're gonna restart a brand new session. We'll right? start in just a second. Um, he can have a seat though. Yep. Hey but, guys, uh, well this is gonna end part one. Time out. I was not done. Oh, you're done. We can't just stop because Alvy walked in. All right. What else you got left to say? I mean, God bless. So, you just got to warn everybody. I mean, that's like, that's like premature. Hold on, hold on. Um, I hadn't shown you that yet. It's like, hey, how are you? Oh, I'm done. <laughs> yeah, I don't think so, Scooter. But hunting is not just about hunting. There's, uh, there's way more to it. There's camaraderie. I mean, we hang out at the campfire. You can't say camaraderie. You can't camaraderie. spell it. Camaraderie. That's what you I just said. You can't even spell it. C-O-M-R-O-D-E-R-Y. <laughs> camaraderie. Oh, my God. <laughs> Come Rodney. So, y'all, we're going to try something new um, for podcast purposes. Uh, we keep uploading hour and a half long shows, and we're not getting a lot of full views on them. So, we're going to so, try to shorten them a little bit. Um, after... Thinking and using our brains and doing some research, you know, thirty minute runs are seems to be the the what's happening. So so we went forty five. Y'all hang tight. We're going to shut this feed down. Uh, we're going to wait about three minutes and then we will start it right back up. So y'all go take a pee break, take a pee, take a poop, get you a drink, whatever you got to do, and come back and see us in just a few minutes. Absolutely. See you in a few. Bicycle. Yeah. Yeah. Oh.
blah blah blah. Mom's in the morning. They pocket is kind of boring. Bourbon, Velcro, new balances. Tatted on my nose. Mickey G, funny packs, that's on me. Blue jean shorts. Yeah, that kind of short. Dad's after dark. 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 Dad's after dark.